Hi, little guy. Hi. What is his name? His name is Pan. We don't know if it's a boy or a girl for several years. So it's always problematic, you know, you have to choose a name. And then we thought, okay, well, he's going to live probably almost 100 years. We remember he was born during the pandemic of, you know, 2020. So Pan, his name is Pan. He was this big when we got him. That's how big he grows. He, he grows so fast. Oh. Cute. All right, I'll put him back. Cool, cool, cool. Hey, hey, Anna. So the recording has just started. <laughs> so it's lovely to have you here. Um, the Anna Stamp is an artist, is also a founder of an artist residency in the Mojave Desert. How do, how do you pronounce that? The Mojave, the, eight, the J is like an H. Yeah, so it's, a, it's the Mojave Desert in California. It goes into Arizona. I think it goes into Nevada. It is out, we're just outside of Joshua Tree National Park, and it's really, really beautiful. I love it, and we're having perfect weather right now, so it's excellent. It's really hot in the summer, and it's pretty cold in the winter, but right now it's gorgeous. And for how long have you been running an artist residency in this location? We have been here about almost four years and I'm from San Diego from the coast and my partner Ted Meyer is from Los Angeles. The story of how we started the residency was we started about five years ago, we started going on residencies ourselves. We went to one in Ireland and then I went to one in France and then we went to one in Mexico and we thought, oh my gosh, this is an amazing experience. We had never done it before. Um, I had not done it partially because I had kids and I had to sort of wait in, for them to grow up and to be off, you know, to be able to leave them for a while. And then it was such a wonderful experience, but also we realized this is a really popular thing. And when I was in graduate school, I don't think it was as popular. And also I thought you had to really be a, a famous artist to go to a residency. And then I realized, no, no, there's residencies all over the place. You know, maybe we should uh, run one. So most residencies are in places where there's some land and land and property on the coast is very expensive in California. So we decided to look inland and there's already a very robust artist community in both the Coachella Valley, which is Palm Springs, and the Morongo Basin, which is where we are. We just found this really rundown property, but I like rundown properties, and uh, we just thought this has so much potential. And so we bought the property, and it took two years to fix it, and we call it the Desert Dairy. We started with residents being in our house with us. Uh, so we have a guest room and we started inviting artists that we knew uh, to come out and stay for a week or two and see what happened. And it was, it was really nice. Uh, my partner's often in LA, so I'm here by myself often. You know, it was like having a, a roommate, like, but a really, really interesting roommate, you know, who's making art. Um, and we would have dinner together and they'd do their projects. And then COVID happened and we realized, oh, that's too close. We can't, uh, we can't manage that. But we had um, a, a, a wing in our house. It's a room in our house, which we hadn't been using and it had a separate entrance. We just built this place like a little separate mini apartment. So now the artists come and they have their own entrance they can come and go they have their own bathroom they have their own little kitchen and they can be much more independent but we still get together you know every three nights we have dinner if, if we're going to openings or we're doing something interesting in town we invite them and some artists want to be much more alone and some artists want to have more interaction with us um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's going well. We're, we're really enjoying the experience and it's really enriching our lives. Um, and all the artists are really getting a lot out of it. You started, uh, first inviting only people you knew, like friends or friends, friend. Um, and then since when you decided to make it 
um, let's say, more open to the let's say general public to a wider, broader artist community? Well, okay. So for the artist residency, we're still learning. So one of the reasons why I、um, wanted to go on all these residencies is because I enjoy it myself. But I was also doing research. Every residency that I visited, it was it's really interesting. They were all run by women, really strong women, and I. So I was learning from each one and how each one funded itself. That was a that was part of my interest. How do they organize? Do they have groups of people that all arrive at the same time and leave, or do they come and go? And every residency is very unique、um, that way. Uh, so, and I'm still interested in in doing more research. We are supposed to go to a residency in Iceland、uh, last year, but it, the pandemic canceled it, and so we're still trying to figure out how we can get there、um, and experience that、um, that also that residency. We are still figuring out how to promote our residency, how to interview artists, how to.、Um, Allow them into our lives because they they come they become part of your lives、uh, for the week or the two weeks or th- even three weeks that they're here. We have realized that somebody coming in for shorter times doesn't work because they'll get here and when you arrive in the desert, it's a little bit of a shock to your system because it's、um, it can be really、um, surprising. It's so dry. It's so big. The sky is so big. It's it sort of gives you a little bit of like, where am I? And you sort of walk around in a daze for a couple days, you know, because you just are trying to get used to it.、Um, and so we're finding that、uh, we need to be careful and like warn people, you know, don't be too hard on yourself. Don't like get here and try to jump into a project. Let yourself just relax, take some time, do some hiking. You know, sit outside and watch the you know sunset and get up early. And we encourage people to relax into the residency. Part of the residency is that's really important to us and to me is interacting with artists because that's what my interest is is really supporting artists, and I get a lot of personal satisfaction out of. Helping the artist to figure out, like, well, you know, how is your career going? What's what's the project that you're interested in doing here, or are you interested in doing any projects? Just、um, helping them. Like, there was just a re- resident here who he didn't really know what he was going to do, and it turned out he's a musician, and he could play. We have a barn that's in the middle of nowhere, and he could play in the middle of the night. And he comes from the city, and he can't practice very easily. And he was so thrilled that he could just go into the barn and play music at any time of the day and night. And it was very lovely to go outside at, at night and look in the stars and hear this beautiful French horn coming out of the barn. So、um, yeah, and in terms of recruiting、uh, artists from you know、uh, places, most people who've been coming are coming from California, or we had、uh, someone coming from New Mexico. We haven't co- had anybody coming in、um, from overseas yet. We hope to, but we we do need a personal reference still at this point because we are trusting and we're you know they have access to our house and so eventually I hope that、um, we will have、um, a broader group and I think that's also partially COVID. You know people. We're not flying places; they were not traveling by plane. So, it's slowly, slowly developing,、um, and and we'll, it'll be changing as we go along. Does that make sense? Yes, I think COVID changed a lot of the landscape of not only you know in terms of gallery and expositions. But also the residency.、Um, just before the COVID, we also uh, started out uh, our own residency projects.、Uh, but then, because of the COVID, Madrid was in a total lockdown, and we couldn't continue.、Uh, we couldn't proceed, thinking about the risks. Although we don't live、uh, with the artist, but still there are risks having the artist, let's say, flown into a city or to a location where they. 
they become, um, a, a, I wouldn't say a, your liability, but you feel responsible uh, for whatever happens to them during the time they are staying at your place. Uh, it's a lot of responsibility and COVID is definitely complicating things. After the COVID, if you can find a way to filter uh, artists, let's say artists that you don't know, don't have a referral, what kind of criteria are you going to put up to, let's say, get the right kind of artists? Well, that's a good question. Well, we only have, a, the, the space is small, so we, they have to understand that. And if they, we have had two people come together, um, but they have to understand that it would be pretty close living quarters. And it's definitely not Airbnb luxury. You know, it's, uh, you know, there are really fancy Airbnbs out here in the desert, which it's very popular. We are not that, you know. I am actually hoping that we can eventually have uh, parents come, like a, a parent and a child or a, a parent and a teenager. We did have um, a woman, a, a, an artist, bring her teenage son and he had a wonderful time because he was an entomologist and he actually stayed, we have an RV and he had his own little like pad out in the RV and she was working on an installation. Um, we're, I think we're really can best serve artists who are willing to be open to the landscape here because if you have a project, if you are just really concentrating on something that is you're already, um, you know, it's already very set and you're not interested in exploring the this crazy landscape, which is here, which involves a huge military base and also this very stark and harsh climate um, and this big expanse of sky and lots of mountains. We have not uh, created a criteria. We basically just want to make sure that they they are already uh, understanding their work. They're not, they shouldn't be students uh, because I don't have enough time to really guide a student, you know, um, in work. It should be somebody who, you know, has, has a, a already a pretty strong focus. Um, and then the focus can be um, affected somehow by the desert. So yeah, I, it that's something that's coming up. We're just having our third season. So we're still, learning um, about the residency. And there are other residencies here in the desert that we're all together. We all get together every six months and we talk about things. Like um, there's a, there's one that's called Boxo Projects and um, high, um, high Desert Highlands Residency. That's been going for 15 years. And then there's a, a residency that uh, focuses on glass making. So all of us get together and we're, we're sharing information to help um, help people to be able to, you know, pick which was, which is right. So if I had a candidate and they wanted to do, for example, um, uh, glass or pottery, you know, using kilns, we don't have kilns. So then I might refer them to the other residency, which is just a half hour away so that they could still come and, you know, experience it. You are a self managed artist residency managed by artist made by artist for artist. You said 15 years ongoing Highland, a big residency. Um, I guess they have a more of a, a professional or commercial management. Is that right? Or they, Actually, they don't. All of the residencies here are run by artists. They are. And uh, the, the two guys who run the Highlands art, um, artist residency, they live part time in Los Angeles, but they come here and you no. Know, we are all artists, so it's all like that. It's not, they are not big professional residencies. There's only a few on the coast. Um, I think there's one in Santa Monica, and I don't think there are any in San Diego. It, the problem with the coast, uh, the big communities, it is just too expensive. The land is too expensive, and we, you know, it's, it's a matter of like offering the residencies for either free or very low cost. We don't want to have to charge residents, um, you know, a huge amount of money because that's not what a residency is about. Um, but on the coast, it's too expensive. We do actually, we do charge a very low nightly fee, but it's just because, uh, you know, we have to clean it and we have to air conditioning and heating and, 
you know, we're providing food and, and um, you know, some structure. So there's a little bit of a cost, but it's nothing, you know, compared to even renting an Airbnb. I understand. I think it's totally fair to charge the cost because you are not their mom, right? You're not going to take all the costs on your shoulders. It's not sustainable in the long run. So that's totally cool. My observation is that there are many younger artists. They are willing to pay more. They actually want to pay more. And they say, I give you three times, but you have to organize me a solo show especially international, like Chinese or other Asian artists, they actually do have a budget when they graduate from college. They have been saving. They know what it takes to step a foot into another country, like in America. So they want that. They are willing to pay, but they need you to deliver um, very specific things, like a solo show, with a renowned gallery or not, but uh, in a place where public is accessible, where important curators and uh, art critics are invited, would you be considering if someone comes to you and and say that? Yes. So if somebody is going to stay for a longer time and we think their work merits it, we do offer them to have a, a solo show, an exhibition in our barn gallery. So we have a barn uh, that we use as both studio space and then there are, there, there are little galleries inside the offices of the barn. And we have had some solo shows at the end of the residency. Um, it, here in the desert, the solo shows have to happen during the daytime because we don't have lighting for uh, a nighttime exhibit and also getting here is uh, difficult at night because uh, you know it's a rural place and people get lost and we t we warn people okay we're gonna invite uh, people and you're you're welcome to invite your own um, people that can come from LA and we have had some LA um, critics and uh, gallerists come to to see our, our space the other <laughs> thing that we offer is a video so my partner is is really good at uh, shooting uh, artist interviews and so we offer them a short video about their work which also promotes our our residency but it's a really nice thing to have an interview and showing the artist whether they're working in in our environment or they're interviewed in the gallery with their work behind them and we post the videos we have our own YouTube. I think I think they're posted on my partner's um, website, but they're on our our Desert Dairy website. So yeah, we do offer things to people like that. I don't I don't know if somebody came in and said I'm going to offer you a huge chunk of money if I would feel comfortable with that because I'm not sure that we could provide the what somebody would expect for that kind of expectations. But a smaller show, we can do it, and you know, it's step by step. Uh, you you do a small residency, you have a small show, then you can go to the next step, then, and the way we, people often ask me, well, how can I find a residency? Like, ask people who have gone to residencies. So, for example, the one in Iceland, uh, it was uh, one of the residents who came here, she said, oh, I went to this beautiful residency in Iceland. So I wrote them right away, oh, you know, this artist is at our residency, um, she recommended you 24 hours later. He's like, you're accepted. You know, it's that kind of personal reference that, uh, you know, because he's, I said, would you please t contact this artist and ask her about us and boop, works instantly. So I can recommend residencies to my artists and then they can go in and they'll be accepted. Aren't people coming to residencies are trying to look for a career breakthrough uh, let's say breaking into, let's say, next stage, using exhibition as a stepping stone or networking. A lot of people coming to residency to meet other um, players and artists in art. But it's a bit like Catch-22. Uh, it's just in my opinion, because if you don't know anybody in art, you can't get into a residency and you can't get into a residency, then you don't know more people in art. If, if you're an artist that's completely isolated and you don't have any friends that are also artists, that's a problem. 
you, you know, if you went to art school, you have colleagues. That's what, I mean, I've been teaching for years and I always tell my students, look around you at the, at your, at your, your classmates. Those are your cohort, help each other, network with each other, stay in touch. In five years, you can call your, you know, or you can Facebook or whatever, connect with that artist and, you know, see them, see how, how their career is going, help each other. You're not in competition with each other. You help each other. Um, so that's the first thing I would say. In terms of a breakthrough, I think what I've seen is more at our residency, which is, you know, very intimate, very, it's just us and one or two people here. Um, they have more of a personal breakthrough. They, they, they do some work and they realize, oh, I, I'm going to change my work this way, or, oh, I need to uh, focus more on this situation. We have long, long conversations about their art, you know, when they come and we're, you know, have a fire outside and, you know, my, that's my question. How are, how's it going? What's, what are your goals? You know, what, what are you hoping for with your, the next step of your art career? And whether you're 70 and you're looking for the next step of your art career or you're 25 and you're, you know, okay, I need, I need help for the next, you know, what, what, let's make some priorities. What are your goals? So I think that's where we can help meeting people here in Joshua Tree. It's possible, but I think it's better. It's much more, um, it's more a personal breakthrough with your own artwork that we're hoping for, that we're hoping to help people with. Yes, I think the desert, the location, the, the isolation itself is very symbolic. It's almost like looking, seeking inner into oneself to look for a breakthrough. I think definitely it matches the, the ambient, the mission statement, the artist journey. Totally. I think it's a very good match. I was thinking or hoping to run a residency that is the, the opposite, is to break into the art market. But that's after, I guess, going to your residency. Then the next step is they are looking for a way to, to penetrate a new market. Personally, if an artist comes to you and say, you know, like, you are also an artist, you know so much about your journey as an artist, would you actually offer some sort of coaching or teaching to this particular artist on demand? Or because you're also an artist, I'm sure you have a lot to, to offer in your knowledge and expertise. I think that, I mean, not teaching skills, definitely not that. So somebody coming from another country is not going to know as much the American system. And I, I'm interested when I, when I listen to you talking um, to other people, you know, the European system or the Chinese system is so different than here. Um, you know, how does one break through? How, what's the definition of success? What is the market like? here, you know, all those things. Um, I'm really interested in talking to people about that and, and seeing, well, how can you um, approach success here? There's a very interesting microcosm here. We, we are in the high desert and then Palm Springs is in the low desert. Even though we're very close to each other, the art market and the art, art itself, the physical artwork and the conceptual artwork is totally different. It's so interesting. Uh, and I actually love that regionalism. So in the high desert, we're very concerned with environmentalism, uh, reusing um, materials. Our, our saint is Noah Purifoy, who was um, an artist who lived here for the last part of his life. And he collected trash and he built um, his work and it's beautiful installation, assemblage, it's sculptural. And he left his studio. It's an open air studio here in Joshua Tree that you can come to anytime. And so people make uh, pilgrimages here and it influences everybody. So everybody is very concerned here in the high desert with the fragility of the desert, protecting the desert. And then down below in Palm Springs, it's very much about style. 
it's modernism. They have a lot of um, a beautiful architecture um, and there's a lot more money down there. The work is a much slicker, um, much uh, bigger. The golden, <laughs> the golden thing that everybody's looking for is how can you make a sculpture which you can put outside in the desert that doesn't disintegrate? You know, that's like the golden thing. <laughs> uh, because it's so harsh. <laughs> what? Gold? Well, I use gold. gold. <laughs> yeah. But everything else just totally disintegrates. Uh, so, but anyway, it's just so interesting, like to say, oh, okay, which market do you want to be in? The, the high desert or the low desert? And right now we are feeling like, okay, we want to have a presence in the low desert too. So we're looking to, for a way to maybe have a studio down there. Um, there, there are lots of artists in both places because LA and San Diego and the whole coastal region has become so expensive. Um, and many artists are just getting pushed out. They're getting pushed out of their studios, out of their, their houses and their rental places. And they move here and it's much cheaper to be here. And you can have five acres, you know, you can have 10 acres if you need to build a big construction, if you, you can live here. So, um, yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of artists that are, are, um, making things like right now we're doing an art walk and it's surprising, uh, where we are having a very successful situation where I, I think we're, we're just making a lot of sales and it's, it's very, very surprising, but people are coming, uh, from the coast and, and coming here to buy artwork, which is, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm, I'm happy. If an artist comes to you and say, you know, like, I would like to sell, like you said, people are buying, I would like to sell. I come here not only to work, but also not to have to bring all of my work back home, if, especially if this person is not driving or is not from a foreign country, it's more expensive to ship the works back home after the residency than selling it even not at the, the most optimal price. People actually traveling, instead of doing a residency, they're actually importing or exporting themselves. So they basically take a flight, they find a residency that is uh, uh, just covering the cost of uh, rental, then work during the residency to sell the works, basically. Um, do you also offer some sort of uh, uh, logistic help we haven't had that situation come up yet. The, the commercial gallery situation is changing. You know, a lot of galleries still haven't fully uh, reopened, especially in the Palm Springs, Palm Desert, El Paseo. It's, there's, a, there's an area in down there which is very high-end galleries. And I think a lot of them have still not opened. Um, uh, so I, and, and getting into those galleries is not easy. It's, it, that's, yeah, that's, that I don't have access to. Um, the smaller galleries up here, um, there, there is a possibility to leave work and try to get it sold, but the prices are not high. You know, in the high desert, the, the, you cannot get several thousand dollars for a piece. It's just not, uh, possible. I've been a teacher for a long time. And sometimes students will say, well, I want to do animation or I want to do such and such thing. And I say, okay, well, you have to be willing to move. You have to be able to go to a place where you're going to meet people. Because I think that sometimes students think, well, everything can be done online. And that's not the way it happens still. You know, I think that it's still a matter of meeting people uh, in person, establishing personal relationships, and and then that's the way you can get your foot in the door to an animation job or um, whatever you're trying to do. Um, yeah, like my son is studying costuming, and he knows he has to go either to Los Angeles or to New York. There's no, you can't just live anywhere and want you know to go where he wants to go. And we've always talked about that. Like he has to, he has to do live in the big city. Um, Maybe your area isn't optimal for sales, but it's okay to take a short break to re-examine what you have done in your art career 
so it's not really a place where you actually have a major career breakthrough, know the most important dealers or agents. And so in a way, how can I say, in a way, a place where you, you live well isn't necessarily a place you work well. That's an interesting thing for me to think about because, you know, as a, as a painter, I'm a painter. Um, I've done other kinds of artwork, like perf more performative work. If I look at my career, okay, I've had some success. I've had some gallery shows or, and I've had some uh, gallery representation and I've shown it nonprofits and, you know, I still haven't had a museum show, but that's a goal. I can, I can get there if I want to. But at a certain point in the last five years, I've realized those things are less important to me. Um, that kind of success is not the way that I define success in my career anymore. I realize that because it's not a linear shot. You know, you can have a solo show and think, oh, I sold a bunch of work and now I'm going to be, and now I'm going to reach the next level. And then whoop, nothing happens. Or you just make a lateral move and then it's down and then there's a recession or, you know, and, or life event happens, you know, life happens and you have to take years off of your career to take care of somebody or, you know, all these things can derail you, you you. And so defining success as an artist in career sales, for me, it's just not, it's not me. It's not worth it. And so I've changed and, and I really consider my most important work now in social practice, which is to have this residency. And then, you know, I have another project in which I'm also supporting artists, um, which is trying to reach the public, uh, with, with sports and art together. But that's where, that's, what's exciting me. And that's what I think that if I am ever to be, remembered in this region as a as an artist who did good it's not because i'm going to make some paintings it's because i'm doing these other things so i i think that talking with artists about how they define success and then success can change you can feel uh like i had some success in this area and now i don't see a future i'm never going to sell a painting for twenty thousand dollars that's not going to happen for me. And I don't care. I don't need that. I want to do something else. Um, and I want to do something else that I feel figure is more important. It's more exciting to me. Does that make sense? Yes. And I guess that's the reason that you are dedicating a lot of time, your own space, you're sharing your life with people and you're helping them to achieve their, their life goals or career goals and I think that's very suitable for either very young artists who are completely lost maybe after right after art school don't know where to go or a second career artist who had all the life had all the wealth had the best job but quit everything to look for the meaning on my channel I meet more artists who are financially more desperate when when someone who is eager to make that financial success, who, what kind of route, where should they go? Like, for example, if someone comes to you and says, I want to sell, I need that money. And you said to me, money is not important. I don't want to listen because that <laughs> money is all I want, is all I need. Yeah. So they come to you uh, in the desert. Likely you're not going to say, stay with us. We will help you. Well, because... Um, the location and the way it works decides that it is not a fast track to become the next Damien Hurst, right? So it's the, it's the search, the inner self, right? It's the Steve Jobs before he had Jobs, right? <laughs> so I don't know how to describe this, but it's more a spiritual and emotional journey. But if someone wants a, a immediate success, which direction are you going to point this person to? Yeah, I mean, I have uh, taught classes to my college students in art entrepreneurship, and I, I understand too, you know, there are many young artists who are just like, I just want to get a job in animation. I just want to um, 
uh, you know, get into a gallery. And, you know, of course, I'm going to say, well, do you have a business plan? You know, that's that you need to have that business plan, you need to know who's your competition. And uh, you need to know who's your who's your market, you know, um, with my I had a commercial line, and I still have a commercial line of paintings. And I enjoy selling when I sell a, a, a painting. I'm like, woohoo! I'm so happy that you know, I was able to sell it. it's very big affirmation you know, like what all your videos are doing, you know, you're, you need to have your target audience, you're not selling to, you know, the, the entire population of the world, you know, you need to know who is my audience, you know, and I do know the audiences here, you know, in Southern California, you know, whether, you know, it is, uh, you know, gay guys down in Palm Springs, or uh, ladies who lunch in Beverly Hills, you know, what are they looking for? Uh, you know, the Silicon Valley types, who, who are, who are they buying? Um, and then you need to target your work. Um, and I think that that's noble. I think that striving and moving forward, um, in your career and then, and, and as you move forward, options are going to happen. And then you have to have the flexibility to say, oh, I thought I was doing street art. And then all of a sudden, I'm really interested in children. You know, I want to I want to interact with children. You know, at risk youth, and maybe um, focus on that. Or you know, so being able to be flexible and and change your goals, I think, is really important. You know, if somebody is just in in art to make money, wow, they should choose a different. <laughs> They should choose a different career. I mean, I think it is possible to make money. You know, I think you can, uh, you can thrive. Um, but wanting, it's, it's like an actor wanting to be an A-lister, you know, or a, or a sport, you know, a, an athlete wanting to get into the big leagues. There's so little chance, you know, of course it can happen. It can. And if you, if that's your goal, go for it, you know, and then if it doesn't happen, hopefully, uh, you're not devastated and you found something else that will really satisfy you in your in your life. Have you thought about opening your own web store for the artists who are joining you at the residency? Let's say there is a store on your own website, Desert Dairy, or maybe on Sachi Art or Art Finder or another website platform where you have like a, a space that you offer the artworks of the artist in residence to the collectors? Not right now, not right now, because I'm running multiple websites for my ventures and I can't add anything else. And also, I am very tired of looking at artwork online. I love seeing artwork in person. The thing I love to do is to go into a gallery or go into a space and be totally surprised at what I see and what I experience. So, um, and I have done some online, um, you know, I used to have my work on Saatchi. I have problems with it and I took my website, I, I took it down. What was happening was I would sell a painting and it would be returned to me. And I'm like, oh, you know, I, I contacted the collector. I'm like, what happened? And she said, well, I love the work, but the blue wasn't right. I'm like, you know, maybe your, ca your computer isn't calibrated correctly because I, my, my photograph is representational. And so I just thought, that's not, that's not cool. That's not cool. I'm not going to do that anymore. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I am not doing that, but I do want to have our brand of the desert dairy. I want to help the artists with our, with, um, you know, with the videos and then with my other project, Mojave land, which artists are being, being very generous. And so what it is, is it's a miniature golf course where each hole is designed by a different desert artist. And so my goal with that project is to have, is to introduce children and families to art through a very sneaky means, you know, because they're playing in it. You know, I want it to be interactive. They're playing in art. And those artists I heavily promote because they're helping me, they're giving me their art to, to put in this place and I will help them in any way I can. 
um, to get shows, like to place their work. And, and so I have, I know people who have galleries in LA and I'm like, okay, this artist fits you, you know, this artist, you should show this artist and they can respect my opinion. Um, and so I'm, I'm actually working on an artist right now to get his work in LA because it's fantastic work and I need him to, I, I really believe in his work. So that, yes, that I'm helping my artists, but not through an online sales platform. When you choose the artists uh, and look at the works, um, can you be completely objective? Because it's, you are also an artist, right? So when you look at other artist works, um, do you think you have a specific standing point because of your training or other kind of background? Yes. I, because, <laughs> it's because I've been teaching for so long and doing critiques for so long. You can see when somebody has a unique vision and a drive. That's what I look for is somebody who is sort of obsessed about their work. Their work is exciting or very beautiful or very obsessive. And I try to encourage that in my in the artists who come here um i i i look at i can they can show me their work and i i look oh that piece that's really interesting um i think you should work a little bit more with this and they can take my advice or not i i'm not offended at all but um i can tell which work is more compelling Thank you very much for coming back. Uh, the recording was interrupted due to some network and computer issues, but luckily Riverside saves the day and we're able to continue our dialogue with Anna Stamp. Um, yeah, so we were talking our um, different missions in the art world, but with a similar goal, that is helping other artists succeed in their life, in their career, but differently. Um, we are more focused on the digital world. And I was uh, originally having um, some questions to ask you, like, what do you think about the online residency? They also call it remote residency. Basically, you virtually do a residency at, the, at your home. But I saw how you work. It's really about the physical environment. It's not like digitally doable in the case of your desert dairy? As we were talking, all residencies are different. Each is completely unique, whether it's virtual or live or in California or in you know Spain. And I do think when we're, we've been talking about careers that when, you're, when, when someone's writing that resume or that CV and you are listing residencies, it is an important part of a curriculum vitae, you know, that you have been to such and such residencies and it looks good. People uh, are not, I don't think they're necessarily going to care that it's virtual or real online or real life or a small one or a big one. I mean, big ones, of course, are prestigious, but you have to start somewhere. So, yeah, I think it's all good. If you use three words to describe your residency program, um, what words would you use? Let's say if it's, um, of course, it's the desert, but essentially, what are the, uh, the spirit of it? Wow, three words. I would say collaborative, uh, c community, um, and peaceful. That's what everybody says about the desert so peaceful here it's so quiet you know they're used to the city life and there's no sounds there's the coyotes howling <laughs> that's it i mean you can hear the birds if a bird flies over you can hear its wings flapping it's pretty amazing wow and you have a lot of animals um, in the property so i think that's also a part it's a package unfortunately we have snakes occasionally uh, so we're always telling people to watch out for snakes, scorpions. We have scorpions that are this big. It's sort of the first time you see one, you're like, what? <laughs> and now I'm like, oh, hi, scorpion. But um, yeah, and lots of um, birds. And we have an oasis in which we um, it's it's where our well is. And it's um, it's very much about where wildlife comes because we have a, 
a little um, fountain there for them to drink from. And we have a camera set up, a motion camera, and we can see the animals that come. And it's coyotes, of course, but owls and rabbits. Uh, we have these big jackrabbits with the big long ears. And then last summer, we had a family of bobcats inside the oasis. So it was a mother and two kittens. And we got to watch them and they would play and, you know, just like house cats, but they're these bigger uh, cats. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, that's it's, very nice. I think that's yeah. very good for artists who work with nature, who need a lot of space, who doesn't mind perhaps being, let's say, far away from like fast internet. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I guess not like virtual reality artists, but the opposite. We're waiting for the Starlink. Uh, to come and the other day so the other thing that's beautiful about the desert is the night because we have star you can see the stars because there are not that many lights and the community protects the night sky and so you look up and you see these stars and the other night we saw the starlink uh, uh, satellites going across the sky in a line and it was so shocking it was like oh my gosh what's happening because there were these it looked like stars and they were all moving in a straight line right across the sky. It was really beautiful. It sounds like a science fiction movie. I know. And we watched the comet. There was a comet at the beginning of COVID and we would, you know, we could look for it in a certain place in the sky and then see it. And it was really exciting the first time we saw it. And then it seemed like a friend that was there, you know, this little the comet with the tail. It, it wasn't really big. But, but some, if you had a really good camera. So, so photographers come here all the time to Joshua Tree because the desert is so um, clear and you can you know, see so, such amazing things, especially at night. On the practical side, for the viewers who are watching this video right now, uh, are you currently open? Do you still have space in the next, let's say, 12 months to receive artists? We do have a little bit of time in... May. The springtime is pretty filled up. People love to come in the spring because of the flowers. And if we have rain, there are flowers, uh, but we can't control it. Um, and let's see, we have a little bit of time in December, but in May. And then if people really want to experience the heat, <laughs> It can come in June, July and August are just out. No, it's just awful. So July and August, I have to go to Europe. <laughs> Here, Mediterranean Sea, the weather is very good. In the July, August, uh, millions of people come over here to the coast in Spain. Would you like to see just a little bit out the window? I can show you. It, it might be bright, but let's look this way. So let's see, this is our, just the view out the window, you can see the mountains and the road and those are, the mountains are of Joshua Tree. So that's what it looks like outside the window. <laughs> Lovely. And I'll put a um, link to your personal website as well as the project website in the description below. And I'm on Patreon just like you. And, you know, that's always a lovely way to stay in a community, you know, to get, you know, these letters from me that are talking about what it's like to live in the desert and, you know, my projects and interacting with my my group of uh, followers. So it's it's really nice, you know, to have people who believe in you uh, and believe what you're trying to work towards. Um, it's a good feeling. So it's nice to have Patreon there and, and, you know, and just regular social media, of course, too. Thank you again very much for your time. I will stop the recording now so um, we can chat on the email or later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you so much.